If you were to tell me that as an adult, I would be wearing overalls because they'd be back in fashion, I probably wouldn't believe you. But here we are. I do have a story that doesn't have to do with grinder or sex, but it is one that I have actually a lot of experience telling. Um, because it happened in college. And another fun fact is that I have told this story for stand-up. So picture uh, Chris in sophomore year at UC Berkeley. So um, this was after I lived in a dorm and I hated it. It was just a little bit too social for me. Like I really just wanted some semblance of my own space. I lived in a triple. Uh, just because, you know, housing is horrible in the public school system. And also, I wasn't a huge fan of the cafeterias. When you live in a dorm, you have to have meal points and you kind of have to use them. So I contacted one of my acquaintances from high school who I've actually done a few group projects before. At the time, I was just very starry-eyed about it and I was just super optimistic about the fact that, you know, oh, we know each other. It'll be really easy for us to get along, you know, just because, like, at least we kind of know each other, even though, like, we actually don't really know each other that much. And, and just for background, this guy also happened to be the kind of kid who was very adamant about his grades. I can say because I'm Asian, he was one of those typical um, Asian American kids who like really, really cared about his grades. To be fair, I cared about my grades too. I definitely cared about my grades. Um, because as a kid, that was basically all I had going for me was my good grades. He needed to get straight A's on everything. Whenever he didn't get the grade that he think that he deserved, you could definitely see how pissed he was. He's the kind of person who does all the extra credit, and so ends up getting like you know over 100% if he if you can. So me and this other guy, we find uh, a house. And obviously we can't afford to rent it all on our own. And so we find four other people actually to live with. Because I'm an introvert, living with that many people was not a really good idea. Also, I felt like I was committed at that point. So I was like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, four other people sound great to live with. At that point, everything else for me was a step above the dorm room. But let me say that this house was real shitty. It's one of those places that where you have a cleaning fee, but you really don't see where the hell they cleaned. And, and me and this other guy, we got our own room. The sad thing though, is that this room was added on to the house as an extra room, just, you know, like as an extra selling point to the house, I guess. And the floor was not flat. Like the floor was not parallel to the earth. Literally, you could place a ball on it and it would like go rolling out the door. That's how slanted this room was. The boys moved in first and then the girls moved in later just because of a summer school or something. So me and the boys, we made a point to be at the house at the same time to welcome them in person. So the girls move in, we're helping with their bags and stuff. I'm chatting up the best I can even though I have social anxiety. And then my roommate comes uh, with his stuffed monkey. He said something akin to his monkey saying hi to. I think like holding his monkey up and being like, he says hi. That kind of took me and the girls aback a little bit just because we were like, uh, okay, sure, uh, uh, hi. Now granted, I've seen my roommate with his monkey before. He cuddles it sometimes, he, he talks to it a little bit, but I never really thought that much about it. So before that event occurred, I was like, Okay, like he has a monkey and he talks to a little bit, but like, you know, like I'm a pretty word person, so what do I really have to say? Me being who I am, I tried to kind of alleviate the awkwardness with like a little joke. I just said something akin to like, oh, do you take him to like your business meetings too? And just for some context, my roommate was studying bio for pre-med and business at the same time. Again, that's how much he cared about doing well. That's how much he cared about his grades and that's how much he cared about being an overachiever. Uh, the next day, he sends me a essay of an email telling me how offensive I was to him and how hurtful I was to him and his monkey. I hate myself to this day for not like screenshotting or saving that email. I've searched for it many times and I still can't find it because I would love to just print it out and read it to you. Like the summary of this long ass essay email was basically, I was really mean, I was really inappropriate, uh, I was super offensive towards him and you know, he has like a really close relationship with his monkey. Um, you know, they would go on like pretend adventures with him and his brother. He feels like he's really close to his monkey because that was kind of all he could get because he wanted a dog when he was a kid, but his parents wouldn't let him have a pet. So they bought him a monkey instead. And, and like, you know, I, I felt really bad for like one second. I'm not saying that I don't have a relationship with my stuffed animals either, all right? It would probably be really hard for me to adjust to losing my stuffed animal because I do have a lot of memories with it and I do, it's like a security blanket for me when I fall asleep. But I don't talk to it and I don't perceive it as like a real thing. No, like this guy's like really overly protective of an inanimate object that he has. Like, let me just say, this guy like Skypes his mom with his monkey and like speaks to his mom through his monkey. I'm very attached to inanimate objects from my childhood too. The joke that I made was pretty harmless. Like this dude, he makes jokes to himself all the time. He makes self-deprecating jokes to himself all the time. That's why I made that joke in the first place about 
taking his monkey to a business meeting because I thought he would get it. I've joked around with him before and it's never been an issue with it. It's just, it's because it was personal. Everybody at the school knew that he applied to like other Ivy League schools, Yale and Princeton and Harvard. And he actually did not get into any of them. Like UC Berkeley is a great school. It's one of the best public schools in the country. No shade to Berkeley at all. But I definitely know that Berkeley was not his first choice. Everybody who knew this kid were like wondering why he wasn't going to Harvard or Princeton. So the next time I visited home, I showed my mom the letter. Uh, after sh uh, I read to her the part about the fact that he wrote about his monkey in his college essays, my mom said without missing a beat, oh, that's probably why he didn't get into those Ivy League schools. <gasps> oh my God. I'm telling you, my mom is like funnier than most of my comedian and friends. I hope it doesn't sound mean when I say that it kind of makes sense. Like UC Berkeley is a very liberal school. And so like, of course, the most liberal school, UC Berkeley would at least try to understand or like take in someone who wrote about his stuffed animal monkey in his college essay. And so suffice to say, um, I did not want a roommate after that. For junior and senior year, I just got my own place. I hope this doesn't make me sound like a petty person. Like this guy genuinely scared the shit out of me. And like, I do genuinely wish all the best for him. Uh, I have no idea where he is now. I don't know if he's a doctor or if he's a businessman because he majored in both of those things. But, but, but yeah, let me know if you have any interesting roommate stories, good or bad. Also, happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I really, really love and appreciate you. Uh, please follow me on all the socials, including this one, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye!